The first thing to do is to collect the hips from the roses. This would normally be done in the autumn or early winter and the hips would normally be red or orange but not always the case. Once you have collected the hips you will start removing the seeds. They will be anywhere from white but not always, brown or in some cases black. These are what the seeds look like when they're removed from the hips. Notice the hips here are quite old and I have taken these from my garden for demonstration purposes for this video. In some cases the seed hip might be too hard so you might need to use a knife to carefully break it open. Be very careful when handling a knife. As you can see a little slice within the hip itself which would be much easier to break open. As you can see, once the hip is open, it reveals what seeds are inside. And this is what would normally be the color of seeds. It's a usually a brown color to them. Once the seeds have been removed, it is now time to clean and soak them. To clean the seeds, I recommend you use maybe an old tea strainer like this, where you can just run it under the tap, just to remove any debris that may be on the seeds themselves. The next stage is to soak the seeds. I'm using an old peanut butter jar, but you can use any form of medium to be able to do this. So you just tip the contents into the jar, making sure there's none left. And then soak in the seeds. Now can you see some have sunk to the bottom and others are floating. I would recommend soaking these for a day and then discarding the seeds that float and planting the seeds that have sunk to the bottom. The next day it is now time to move on to the next stage. These seeds have been soaking for a day. As you can see there are still some floating but the majority have sunk to the bottom. Now time to prepare them for their stratification period which will be required to keep them in the fridge for at least three months so that they can stratify and then start growing. The roses are now back in the tea strainer and they will be going back inside that jar. I just wanted to state with regards to the seeds you can put a little bit of hydrogen peroxide into the water while it's soaking to kill off any bacteria. I personally don't do that myself, but that is an option. Now for the next stage, we will be using perlite. That's all you need is this bag of perlite. And that will be going inside the jar. Now I will warn you, perlite is very messy stuff. So be careful of the dust. With the perlite in the jar, it is now time to add the seeds. With the seeds in the perlite, it is now time to give them some moisture. All I use is a spray bottle of water. And you just spray the medium, not too much. Give it a little shake so that they get mixed in with the perlite and just give them another spray and that's it that's all you need to do and the jar will now go into the fridge where they can be checked on periodically normally i tend to wait at least a month and start checking weekly but this process can take anything up to three months or maybe even longer 
the lid on the jar it is now time to go into the fridge like i said the seeds will remain in the fridge for the best part of three months when checking the medium just make sure that there's enough moisture in there you can normally tell if there's moisture because there's moisture buildup on the jar and then if you see any signs of life you will normally see what would be described as a little tail that comes out from the seeds and like I said it's just as simple as that make sure the medium is not overly watered that it's sodden this is why perlite is the best option because it stays more on the dry side and that's all you need to give them is moisture that's all they need to sprout and once the roses have sprouted they look like this can you see the little tails that is your baby rose and then what you'll do is you'll pot these up any form of seed or sowing compost or low fertilizer compost because but as you can see these are the babies so as soon as you see these you pot these up straight away and obviously it's a form of excitement because these will potentially be really lovely roses for you or they could be complete duds we have to be realistic about this but this is the fun of growing roses from seed the next stage is to put the seeds into the soil I have a low fertilizer multi-purpose compost I've pre-watered it and all I'm going to do is put the seeds into here so I'm just gonna make three little dibs normally you would do one per pot but I'm doing this as just a demonstration for you not too deep and what I'm going to do is just carefully don't break the tails place the seeds into the soil and just carefully cover each hole up now this has already been pre-moistened so they don't need anything else other than water as they need it once they start growing to give you an example after a couple of weeks your seedlings should start to look like this they've developed their true leaves can you see that's the cotyledons right there that's the first leaf that you'd come to expect and then these are true leaves and then after about a month you'll end up with something that looks like this much bigger growth and here is generally where the bud will start to form if you look at this one that is your rosebud right there so this one shall be in bloom soon within the next couple of weeks a two-year-old rose that means a rose has gone through a full season and has gone into a second season will look something like this so have this in a pot so it's not in the ground so it might be considerably bigger if I had planted this out but you can expect blooms to look like this and this is a two-year-old rose from the footage I've shown you and the scent is just amazing from it so this is a two-year-old rose as I said so if you follow the steps that I've shown you you will end up with a rose that looks just like that mm -hmm.